been a little while with this, huh? Today, I'm going to be going over some of the matches from our most recent game against CLG, where I played 2v2 with Carter. As you guys probably know, we did end up losing, but I'm just going to walk us through our gameplay. Maybe some things we can could, do, could have done differently. So yeah, let's just hop into it. All right, so starting into the match here, obviously me and Carter against Gio and Backstab. Gio and Backstab played really well in the set. There really wasn't much we could have done. We felt like they kind of outdecked us, outprepared us. The decks were just a little bit better than ours. You know, they had the Dark Prince and the Guards, which are really good in 2v2 because they give up a lot, or they're really good against spells, which obviously there are an abundance of in 2v2. So starting off the match here, kind of just plain and simple, you know, not really much going on. Neither side really wants to go too aggressive as to give a big counter push. Me and Carter kind of start off the match, you know, on the aggressive side, obviously Giant Skeleton getting close to the tower there, but the guards will end up stopping that. I feel like if we um, had gotten that Giant Skeleton in the tower, we would have been able to win the game, basically then and there, just being able to spell them out and get some chip damage with our RG. But with the NATO band, they're able to do some weird minor placements and, you know, kind of snowball a big push against us. Not the snowball card, but just, you know, build up a big push as they're doing right here with the Giant Skeleton and the Royal Giant. You know, they're playing really well so far. A lot of great synergy. They do actually take out our miner there which was a bit of a mistake from my end, you know, kind of building into that counter push from their end. So, yeah, obviously this is kind of a stalemate here. No side's really going to get that much damage. They already have 500 damage on our tower because of the, I believe, Miner and Poison on their end. Um, so, you know, we do a pretty good job of shutting down this push. However, it looks like they are actually up a good bit of Elixir. Geo having 10 Elixir there with placing the Ewis down on that Inferno Dragon. Now, this does allow us to get our flying machine down, to get a bit of a counter push. However, they do defend this well with a, I believe, Mega Minion of their own? Yeah, you know, that's a four for three trade for them. And they do actually turn it into a fairly good push where I have to end up fireballing. You know, pretty decent fireball on our end. Kept our Mega Minion's health at pretty, pretty prim condition. However, we do get shut down on this counter push pretty quickly. Even though we do get good poison there, they're playing really well, spacing out their troops for the most part and kind of just, you know, coordinating those push with themselves, getting those giant skeletons in front of those royal giants, which gives a lot, a lot of support. You know, it takes out the support troops, and it also tanks a lot of damage for the royal giant, which is obviously very strong in this 2v2 meta right now. Um, they're playing, um, as I said, fairly well. Not really too much going on right now. Looks like they're just trying to start a huge push, which they did pretty well. Mina there was a little bit weird. Give us some fireball value with that Mega Mean and Flying Machine and Ewis actually. Although we do have to play our Mega Mean just to make sure that Ewis gets no damage on the tower. As right now, we do have a bit of a damage advantage. However, they're really good with defending. They caught basically every one of our miners. The Tesla is perfectly placed for the Royal Giant and they've got the double E-Wiz. You know, Giant Skeleton does do a fairly good job of taking care of this, care of this counter push here. However, it just does allow their Giant Skeleton to get in front of their Royal Giant for another counter push on their end, which ends up being our demise. I believe it's this push right here, where they go with the Giant Skeleton and the Royal Giant right at the bridge, and they poison the Tombstone and get two of the bats actually, which gets a lot of value for them. We do place a pretty nice Tesla, so we're able to take out the RG with that Inferno Dragon as well. However, the support troops here just get a lot, a lot, a lot of value. Taking out our RG there, they're really um, kind of coordinated here with the flying machines. The EU is obviously separating them, getting the miners in, going with the spells, the fireball on that. And, um, you know, I believe they're going to fireball a tower here. So yeah, they're just getting a lot, a lot of value. And that was really well played from them in game one. All right, jumping into the second game here. I feel like this matchup is a matchup where they can see where they really outdecked us. We weren't as well prepared for the double hound as we might have liked to have been. Um, and they were really able to stall, you know, kind of pile up huge pushes, even in single issue here, starting off with that double hound. And they're gonna play the Inferno Dragon to take care of that flying machine. So they're gonna get a pretty good bit of damage in this push. We do defend fairly well with our Tesla and a Mega Minion Bats right on the Inferno Dragon a little bit later into the push, which kind of shut it down for the most part. However, on our end, offensively, we do not have any substance at all for this push. The Inferno Dragon just melts our Lava Hound and it gets even 100 damage on the counter push. So as you can see, this is a great start for them. The Valkyrie does get some good damage on the guards and the Ewis takes it out. It's fairly lucky from our end, um, but even still, they're gonna get a good bit of damage and have a very nice start to the game, being up in Elixir overall as well. Um, looks like they're up about two Elixir, one from each player. Um, 
but here is kind of a, a weird spot in the game. As you can see, Geo Cycle, he only has the Balloon, the Tesla, the Snowball, and the Fireball, so they have to go offensively here, which is a point where we could have kind of played a little bit better defensively. Um, however, they get some good Fireball value, they poison the Tombstone here, and we do end up placing the Igus right into the Tombstone, which gives them a good bit of value, and the Balloon actually does get death damage onto the tower. So that was a really good trade from them. Even when put in an awkward spot, they were still able to capitalize and get a lot of damage. Now, a bit of a minor misplay from my end. I should have played it for the back so the Iwis could maybe get a hit on the tower. And with the NATO ban that was in this match, the miner would never be NATO to the King Tower. So it was a fairly risk play, uh, risk free play there from my end where I made a little bit of a mistake, but that is all right. Now going to double looks here, we've got 10 more seconds, they're just starting to build up a pretty minor push, you know, just apply some pressure, just like we're doing, they're going with the Inferno Dragon Mega Minion at the bridge, we're going to go with the Inferno Dragon as well, with some Mega Minion on their Mega Minion, just to take that out pretty quickly, however, their defense seems to be a lot more valuable, even though we do get a nice lightning onto the um, the tower, the Inferno Dragon, and the Tesla, that it was just completely shuts out our Inferno Dragon. And here is somewhere where I completely overcommitted. I played the Snowball, as you guys saw, when the Fireball was also coming down. And even that 2 Elixir just allows them to get a huge counter push here, going in with the Double Hound at the bridge, the Mega Meme, the Inferno Dragon, and the Balloon, and they're going to actually end up playing a Rage Throw on this, which is going to completely tear apart our tower. With Lightning in our hand, we do stop the um, Balloon from getting hit on the tower, However, you know, it's not as good as taking care of those other support troops. So they are able to just completely steamroll us there. Even though they played a lot of the troops at the bridge, you know, a last ditch effort from up, a last ditch effort from us right here with the Inferno Dragon, or no, with the, the Lob Hound and the Balloon at the bridge, but it doesn't end up working out in their favor. So they do take that series up 2-0, and they end up actually winning the match 2-0 as well. So very well played for them. Um, we're looking forward to our next match against Complexity on Thursday, so make sure to check that out.